Okay, grateful to um, yeah, have you all here. Wanted to begin this session with the that five 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 exam and prayer, just to be able to to do it briefly and to be able to allow for an opportunity to even experience the the beauty of being able to recollect ourselves, put ourselves in the presence of God, and recognize God as being real and active in our lives and in the lives of those who are around us. So I'll lead us all through this examine and for our graces, for our faults, and then for our um, virtues that we'll be asking for. And at the end, we'll, I'll just invite you all to um, even share just one grace with your table from, from today. Um, so that'll, that'll be the idea. Let's just place ourselves in the presence of God, just quieting our, our minds and hearts. Our God is pure love. He is life itself. He never ceases to not just acknowledge you, but hold you, sustain you in existence. It's by his very breath that we're able to breathe. It's by his thought that we're able to think. It's by the beat of his heart that we're able to have our hearts beat with that same love, that same life. In the name of the Father, the Son, the Holy Spirit. Amen. Placing yourselves in the presence of God, if we just take a moment now to think back, as I invited you to, to replay your day, starting from the very moment that you woke up, every detail, just, yeah, watching it through. And let's just look at our our day today and examining for those graces, those moments of joy, of peace, of life, recognizing the true gift of God in ourselves or our experiences or people that we encountered today. So obviously so much if you were on your own you could have more time to linger but we'll just pause there acknowledging those moments of grace let's just take a moment just to thank the lord for those gifts now we just uh, look back at our day one more time in this time let's just look for those moments that we missed it we didn't respond we weren't able to come out of ourselves, weren't able to serve as he's called us to serve or love as he's called us to love, or um, maybe even, yeah, truly broke a commandment. Let's not be afraid to, to look at those all in God's love and acknowledge them in his mercy. Acknowledging our faults, our sins, just take a moment in the silence of our hearts, just to acknowledge our two contrition and gratitude for God's mercy.
Finally, let's just take a moment to look ahead um, to the rest of this evening, even tomorrow or this week. Just look at what um, we are anticipating and ask God for help with, yeah, three, five different virtues that would be most helpful for us and being able to remain faithful to him each of those moments. We conclude by praying, all glory be to the Father, and to the Son, and to the Holy Spirit, as it was in the beginning, this now, and shall be forever. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. Glorious. Thank you all. Amazing. Just to, the power of silence. Even if we're not, we're not talking, right? Just to be able to be united and recognizing how God has been present in our day. So we'll break up into our, our small groups now. And my encouragement is before you go through your um, responses to this um, questions, just go around the, the table and just in one line, if you could just be able to share as the Lord prompts you, one grace of, of this day that you're able to be grateful for from the Lord. So share that and then we'll go through. Um, let's come back together and we'll come back around 745. So let's. 35, maybe 40 minutes to go through it. I know it's a lot to go through and so some good chapters too. Ready, break. <laughs> All right, everyone, grateful to have you. We're gonna break for about 35, 40 minutes. So if you're watching it live, you can hang in there for that time. And if you're watching it as a recording, you can fast forward. Peace.
Hey everybody, thanks for um thanks for engaging at your table and hopefully the experience of sharing your graces was uh yeah just beneficial as as well uh yeah the table that i was able to sit at there's just some good comments of like well, i know it's nothing big but <laughs> it's like oftentimes it's the little things right that are are so like moving and and that's where even just what was it six minutes that we did of just silence of just kind of being aware of our day allows those little things to emerge and for us to recognize that's God. That's incredible. It's like one, you know, one is enough. And so often he just blesses us with an abundance of them. So um, great. Let's go through these uh, two chapters, chapter six and seven. If you have any questions, please. Uh, yeah, jump in. So the three temptations. Some of us, I think, have talked about this before, if you've been with me in the Bible study. Um, full disclosure, I've been stealing from him for a long time. And he, he just does a great job of bringing, bringing to light what a lot of us can just quickly glance over. It's like, yeah, how many of us have heard the story of Genesis 3 and the fall of Adam and Eve and the serpents like hundreds of times? How many of us have really taken time to consider what was so appealing about that fruit? And many different biblical scholars didn't. They looked at it and they were able to see from these three um, delights to the eyes, to the flesh and the pride of life, like it could make them wise. Those as being these sources of all of the temptations that would follow. And then from that lens, they were able to see Jesus in the desert being tempted by that same snake, that same Satan, in these three ways that correspond to the concupiscence of the eyes, the flesh, and then of the pride of life. You really are God. And that St. John in the scriptures picks it up. Anyway, there's just like a beautiful coherence. And so I hope you were able to follow that. Um, yeah, we were kind of rejoicing and like, the charts, the graphs. It's like, <laughs> he loves those. And I think we do we too. Of oh, just, yeah, being able to see it all. One thing that hit me with um, the, the story where he says, you know, if you eat of that tree, you will die. And the yeah. devil came back and said, you won't die. He says, physically, we won't. But we're turning our back on God. It's a spiritual death. Yeah. And Jesus came to say, you're welcome back. Love that. Yeah, that, so the, the line that, that jumps out too is Satan twisting the words of God saying, you won't really die. <laughs> you won't die. And um, yeah, what a what a temptation to think that, that God isn't true to his word. And, and then even, here's where the, like when we aren't listening to the words of God, but we're listening to the words of the enemy, they can linger. And so what happened whenever they ate it and physically they were still breathing, thinking, moving, yeah, like maybe the, maybe that serpent was right mm -hmm. and missing. God is true to his word. Mm -hmm. It's always true. And the death that he allowed for wasn't just a physical death, but a spiritual death. Um, and so, yeah, that, that's a great <laughs> insight too. Um, number Number two, it is impossible, he says, to fully understand the good news of salvation without first grasping the bad news of temptation to sin. What's your reaction to this claim? How would you describe in your own words the bad news of temptations to sin? <laughs> I don't know if that was too personal or whatever, but uh, it didn't have to be, but I, I think as I've heard it said before, Father John Ricardo does a great uh, line. He says, the good news is no news to those who don't know the bad news. 
which is true. And I think for us today, like, especially myself trying to like evangelize and to like, let everyone know, like, you have a God who loves you and who has saved you and has given you a new life, a new inheritance. And most people in the world are like, eh. <laughs> I I have video games or I have, you know, I like, you know, I have YouTube or I have TikTok or whatever. Like I have all these different things that the world offers me. And it's like, maybe you don't know how bad your situation is. And temptation is one that for us to really be honest with is a great insight into like how depraved we are. So, yeah, how many of us have ever done something that we didn't want to do? How many of us have ever done something that not only did we not want to do, we knew we weren't supposed to do it. And we did it. And, and, we, did it anyway. and we knew that when we did it, it would make us miserable. And we still did it anyway. I mean, I mean, <laughs> yeah, right. All of us. Romans chapter seven, Paul talks about that. You know, why do I do the things that I don't want to do? It's like, this is a great explanation of how bad it is. Uh, this table said it great. It's like, I know that they're just material things. And so why do I still just like, right. That's the brokenness of our condition that we continue to fall for the same blasted trap again and again. And we're suckers for it. That could be really depressing. And perhaps we need to actually be in, in touch with how discouraging that is. Because it's when we actually see, again, that depravity. It's like, I can't stop doing what makes me miserable and rupturing my relationships with my pe people that are closest to me, that finally I can come to appreciate <laughs> that's why he came. <laughs> to break the chains of sin, to even give us a remedy for the temptations. That not by my own willpower, but by my surrender to that grace and that mercy I can allow him to rehabilitate me such that I can have now self-mastery over my thoughts, my impulses of my flesh, and my stubborn pride that wants things my own way. Does that make sense? Mm -hmm. Too okay. much so, huh? Yeah. <laughs> Too much so. Perfect example. Yeah. Facebook. Facebook. I hate Is that Facebook. A <laughs> but I'm addicted to Facebook. Mm. I get so angry when I go on there because I see things that make me angry and everything. And I respond sometimes the way I'm not supposed to respond, but I do it anyway. And I say, I'm not going to be on Facebook anymore. So when I go home, the first thing I do is pick up that pad and look, look on Facebook. It's an addiction. That's a great, that's a great analogy. It's terrible. Yeah. And it's not a, a godly thing. It's, a, it's become a horrible thing. I get a lot of news on there and I, I keep in touch with a lot of friends on there, but there is so much negativity on there and so much evil on there. Uh, that's just like, that's just like with, with the seeing the, the, the fruit being the fruit, good. Exactly. It, 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 Facebook really has the, the potential to be very good. It, yes, it does, but it's also it's, very evil. It's the, well, it's, it's the misuse yeah. of it. Yes, it is. Very evil. It has made people so angry and negative with each other because they're hiding behind Facebook. They don't see that face-to-face -face contact anymore mm -hmm. and they say whatever they want to say. And it doesn't yeah. matter who they hurt or how they hurt. It's a great analogy. Yeah, the analogy just being it's Facebook, horrible. social media. We could even just say the news. And the news is just, yeah. it's just playing on our fear. It's playing it. on our on our like raw emotions. And um, yeah, it'd be a great thing to try and exercise self-control and not watch it. And if you can't not watch it, um, break it. And if you can't break it, call a priest who has a baseball <laughs> team. I will do you a favor. Send him an email. <laughs> I'll come to your house with a shovel. I'll dig a hole. We can put your phone in the hole. I can smash your phone and then we can bury it and you won't be tempted anymore. So, so, well, you didn't go on Facebook. <laughs> it's a little too personal, you know. <laughs> <laughs> Number three. <laughs> Saint John of the Cross speaks of every conceivable sin that is part of this fallen world flowing in some way from these three temptations of concupiscence of the flesh, concupiscence of the eyes, and pride of life. Do you 
agree or disagree? Agree. Absolutely agree. It's a good move to agree with the saints. Yeah. <laughs> Especially one like John of the Cross. Um, why? And if you agree, how might this be helpful in making your next examination of conscience? Um, so, yeah, I don't know about you. The paragraphs on 67 and 68, where he lists some of the social sins or just like, yeah, the, the sins of our, of our world today. Right. And to tie them to these three um, concupiscences, concupiscences <laughs> um, I thought was very insightful. I thought it was very insightful. And so hopefully it resonates with you. In short, the idea of the examination of conscience, the idea is, is this, and we'll get more into this as we go along, the, the garden analogy. It's like it's one thing to pick the weeds from the top, right, of your garden and just to pick it's another thing to know the root, like where are all these weeds coming from? Mm -hmm. And so we can spend a lot of time being really frustrated over why am I so angry? Why am I so angry? Why am I so angry? And maybe we're missing the like the deep down root is this pride of life. Deep down, I want to be in control. Deep down, I want to have this sense of security. Deep down, I want everyone to agree with me and so, like whatever it might be. And so instead of just like confessing, I got angry again, I got angry again, or I had this outbreak, I'm able to like examine, okay, so what was the root there? And that's a great thing to bring to the Lord in confession, to try and allow his mercy as great of access as possible to the root of, <laughs> I want to be God, and I'm not, and that's really <laughs> frustrating. But that's a beautiful thing to, to bring to him. Tracking. Praise God. How about fasting? <laughs> Woohoo! <laughs> That's a wonderful We need a definition. Oh, we need a definition. Okay. Um, fasting, if I were to um, define it vaguely, fasting would be the uh, reduction or removal of a particular or type of substance. Fasting in particular, though, is not just a reduction or removal of any site type of thing, substance. Um, so it's like, we use it pretty generally in a lot of ways. Like I'm going to fast from Facebook or social media, or I'm going to fast from sweets, or I'm going to fast from this other like thing that's tempting. Fasting at, at the root at, of like a pure definition is a reduction or ceasing to consume food. It has everything to do with, with food is what fasting is. Now, I'm not here to say that using it more generally doesn't have a place. Absolutely, right? To be able to have exercise, uh, self-will, self-mastery, and um, not giving into temptations. A great thing. Yep, I'm going to fast from these different activities or substances. But biblically speaking, the, the root has to do with food, eating less or not at all, or just, just on water. So how were you all raised with relation to fasting growing up? I'm sure there are a lot of different experiences. Um, so I'll, I'll leave that to you. And I, I know um, in this table that I was at, it's it was kind of the, we discussed, okay, Ash Wednesday, Good Friday is being these core fasting days. But then also we brought up the fasting before mass. And that's kind of an interesting one too, because I'm sure a lot of you have seen just even that um, change uh, and, and reduce. Because it used to be. It used to be three hours. Sure. It used to be midnight. Used to, midnight. used to be three hours. Yes. And then not too long ago, it was midnight. It, it was the day before. That, I mean, that's why. Uh, midnight Christmas water, mass was uh, such a, a big thing because you were you truly were fasting all the way and then the very first time that you could um, you could go to mass you were going in midnight and then being able to eat afterwards um, so yeah it was midnight before then it was three hours before mass and then it was an hour before mass and now it's an hour before holy communion which we acknowledge with the Father Adam homily is really like 15 minutes before Mass. So, <laughs> so um, 
give an extra time for that breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> You're welcome. You're welcome. You thought it was tennis. It was a <laughs> um, So nothing to like, uh, it's not my place to like be critical of it, but for us to appreciate fasting, if hopefully you saw like the biblical roots, it was a preparation for encountering God, that it prepared not just our mind, not just our, our soul, but our bodies too, to encounter God. And so I don't know how you look at approaching the, the fast before mass, but God wants to be so generous with us. How about us with him? Consider your own relationship to food. Ask God to help you in observing how you approach food, use it, enjoy it, share it, serve it, buy it, save it, etc. Does that go for liquids also, like coffee and milk and juice? And uh, the fast before mass, yeah. Um, technically, the fast before mass is only water. We had some good debates in seminary about what about water just brewed with some <laughs> brewed with convenient beans that allow <laughs> that allow for a, a tasty caffeination and um and i think i think if you have a if you have a strict look at the at the mat at the fast it would be just water yeah. Well, I got the people father that could not have had to eat because of the health problem. Right. Or have to take medication with some. Okay, so yes. Yeah, I need to be more careful. With all of this, the church is very understanding and reasonable. And so, yeah, if you're not over to 18, if you're under 60 years old, if you have any health um, complications, medicine that you need to be taking for, for your health, if you're pregnant, like these things are reasonable exemptions from what the church offers in the ideal. And so, yeah, that should also be yeah fully understood. And that doesn't mean that you're cheating or like take, looking for the easy way out. If anything, like allow that to be your penance. To we also to got into the talk about Fridays, no meat, yeah. but what if it's St. Patrick's Day? What if it's this big oh. wedding? What if it is a funeral? Like, yeah. where are yeah, those like, lie, you know? That's not right. But they, the church gives dispensation because it's St. Patrick's Day. I didn't I like remember. that. Oh, we did <laughs> last year. I, know, right? I didn't like that. I thought that was we wrong. We did it for fish yeah. fry. And then the fish fry didn't like it. They didn't like <laughs> it because they lost money. Yeah. They lost money. <laughs> because Bishop Zubik said we could have corned beef on yeah. Friday. And then you run here an interest, and we looked up what the traditional milk in Ireland for St. Patrick's Day was. <laughs> It's fish. <laughs> and the corned beef That's is an American Americanized. Thing. Interesting. The Father, if we can't fast before Mass, how did Jesus do 40 days and 40 nights in a desert? Oh, 40 Jesus. days. We can't even do four hours. I think, yeah. How did Jesus how did do, do 40 it? days? We can't even do it. We can't days. do 40 minutes. <laughs> we complain about it. Yeah. Um, I, maybe that's to the point of my the second question there like what's the relationship to food and so this isn't to take away from like real neat like what happens if we don't eat right we die eventually it's like it's a very essential part of our of our living mm -hmm. and yet our world right now mm -hmm. and this could be a whole other talk or podcast like mm -hmm. our world right now has taught us to be trained psychologically to be hungry just about every moment of every day right. and like i fall into that it's just it's so easy like food is always available and it's just a really in the food like literally the food that we're offered is actually not nourishing us in a substantial way just because of how poorly made it is and so that our whole society especially american society as soon as we get done eating we're thinking about the next meal it's like most most of the world has never experienced that ever before, but for a lot of different reasons, that's it. And so that's not to be like condemning of any of us, but just to be able to acknowledge like, how did Jesus do it? He had a very different relationship to food. Um, it wasn't just for immediate pleasure or immediate gratification. Sometimes it's utility too. It's like, I have power bars in my car so that I don't, you know, like, I like just have like the energy to keep going or something. And I'm not, you know, Food is meant to not just sustain us, nourish us, to bring us together. 
It's also meant to bring us into communion with God too. It can be a beautifully yeah. spiritual thing to have a meal together with your family, with your close friends. Yeah. It is so hard in our society because when we go through a drive through mm -hmm. we supersize. Supersize <laughs> the fries, supersize mm -hmm. the drink. You're, you're going to sit down in the evening, watch TV. Mm -hmm. you're, you're, uh, your lazy boy has these pockets full of all the snacks. <laughs> <that you have. laughs> then you go to China. And the first thing you see when you walk in, the pastries all over the place. Then you walk to the store and you're leaving the store. And there's all these liquid sugar drinks mm -hmm. and all the cookies and 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 candy. And then I if mean, you're gonna meet some friends you haven't seen for a while, what's the first thing you do? Where should we go to lunch? Where yeah, we... <laughs> I mean, it's it's hard. The, the, yep. They said the Israelites or you know fasted the whole family. All they had to worry about were dates and nuts and. Yeah, well, I could have fasted if it was locusts. <laughs> I could have fasted. All I have is locusts. Now, I, I, locusts. I know for myself as a kid, when my mom said fast, I would think, oh, starving. But no, <laughs> there's you a did, difference between kidding. the starving and fasting. So, it did, you know, when you think of Jesus out there for 40 days, did fasting. Moses fast for 40 days when he went up he to Mount Sinai? probably is consuming yeah. something, something, but... You know, it, it, the Muslims, when they do their fast for a month, the Ramadan, it, yeah. it, it, they have a meal before sunrise, and then they don't take anything in the rest until sunset. But they, they're still consuming food to, you know, to keep themselves going and stuff. Right. So even John the Baptist, I mean, he was out in the desert fasting all the time, or eating grasshoppers <laughs> and honey, you know, like whatever he was able to catch, you know, which right. is what they want us all to convert to grasshoppers. Well, <laughs> I'll fast. I'll fast. <laughs> oh, so are you saying that Jesus I was miss, eating something? I, I miss what you... I've always felt that he was supplying just enough. Okay. with what was there which uh, could leave you feeling hungry i never saw his yeah. he was out there starving i can understand himself. why it's really hard to imagine mm -hmm. and especially when jesus has again the fullness of divinity they're right. like is this a right. divinity hack or something that he's <laughs> tapping into um i think if we read the yeah the text honestly that really does imply that he, he didn't eat and right. That he would still have water and and everything, he would but um, water he would die certainly in right. The yeah. Yeah. yeah, you know, he was but still still fully well human, yeah. but was able to completely abandon his mm -hmm. desire for food and sustenance and to be able to rely on on the Lord to give him what he what he, what needed. he needed. So, yeah. yeah, like God did that with the when they were leaving the host the. Bread in the morning and the oh, man. Yeah. Um, great. Uh, okay. This is helpful. TJ has a question. Hey, TJ. Hey, <laughs> What's the difference between fast and abstinence? Great question. So, fasting is reducing or removing food, the very substance. Abstaining would be to remove a type of food so yeah like we usually think of not fasting from meat because we're still eating but we're abstaining from meat we're, we're removing that and and so colloquially yeah we wouldn't talk about like i'm gonna abstain from alcohol like i'm fasting from alcohol is what most of us say or sweets but it's really like you're just removing the sugary foods from your diet you're still you're not experiencing like the like the hunger um, and for a lot of us, like to fast, what the church offers us right now of the two smaller meals, the don't equal one full size meal, that's enough for us to like still have what we need. And I, you know, you kind of reference this of like, and sometimes it's still like engaging our digestive system that actually elicits a greater sensation of hunger. We're not actually hungry; we just ate, but yeah, we it's activated and we um, and we feel it. Most so, of our hunger is up here. So. 
you know, it's not. That's kind of what I've come to understand. Yeah, a lot of it's the psychological like need or or comfort, and yeah, I've struggled with this a a lot. Even like a yeah, a different snack or something before I go to sleep. I'm just well, like, I, I, saying, I know I don't I need that. I just TV go to state or by myself. So I eat in front of the TV. So every time I sit on my couch, like, what's the first thing I think? Of? Well, yeah, there's the psychological right. So it's like, what's your relationship to to food? It's a great thing, not just to like think about, but also bring to the Lord. Sorry, TJ, did you have a was that helpful? Is that your question? More than it was. <laughs> All right. <laughs> They're kind of the same, just one more. <laughs> yeah. But are we still supposed to abstain from meat on Friday, or is that changed? We're getting different. You know, people are saying we're still outside of one. Yeah, with the Catholic Church. Isn't that just what? Here's where it's. <laughs> So the, the question is, what what are we obligated to do, to do in terms of fasting and abstinence? Right now, the church asks us to fast two days out of the whole year, Ash Wednesday and Good Friday, and then also the time before Mass. Abstaining is every Friday in Lent, um, and also Ash Wednesday. And there was such a miss um construing or like misleading in after the second vatican council in terms of like fridays outside of lent that i've come to realize a lot of priests told their people not the full story the full story is that canonically we as catholics need to still abstain from meat every single friday what they allowed for was just a, a recognition that's societally that can be really challenging for many different reasons living with many other people who don't share our same abs abstinence um commitments or obligations and and so what canonically the church allowed for was you can replace that friday penance and do you want to understand we abstain from meat on friday because on good friday Jesus gave up his flesh mm -hmm. for our salvation. Mm -hmm. And so that's a simple way for us to remember the flesh that he offered up, I can offer up, not, not enjoying this, this meat. And so if that's not possible or yeah, not ideal, you can substitute it with another penance, stations of the cross or another like, yeah, re refraining of um, I'm going to give up social media or I'm going to give up this dessert or like what I like, Whatever it is, it doesn't have to be extravagant, but it would be something intentional that Friday is going to be a day of penance, a recognition of the Friday salvation. So I understand that hasn't been communicated effectively. Uh, if anything, it's been a lot of senior citizen, they'll say, oh, that doesn't apply to you, you know. Yeah, right. And not that that doesn't have a place, but but they do ask you to do something else if you're if you're not supposed to like it. If you're over 65, you don't have to fast. Do something else prayerful the idea is that there would still be inappropriate penance for right. your state in life <laughs> yeah we're talking during lent or every friday he said every friday every friday, every friday every throughout the year that it, that's, it, that's, that's a great question i think when i was yeah, a kid it was like i don't know when i was a kid yeah. i don't know why it's not mentioned yeah. 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 I am so uh, happy that we're having a robust conversation about this. Good news. I want to invite everyone this coming week to, to staying on Can we do a fast together? Yeah, yeah. Can we do a fast together? Um, and again, appropriate to where you are. And if you have, like, if this is something that is associated just psychologically or personally with your history that like wouldn't be conducive or effective, then please substitute it with something that's yeah. appropriate. But the exercise for this week on Wednesday, I thought it would be a, a great thing for us to be united in our, our fasting that we can fast for one another. And this is the two small meals that don't equal the one regular size meal, no snacks in between. We're just drinking, um, just drinking water. Um, and just like, yeah, a, a way that we can be intentional that I'm not, yeah, I'm going to accept the hunger that, that comes from that. And then I'm going to unite it to the prayers of my group. And we all have a lot of people that we need to pray for in our, our families and, and community. So to be intentional about, about that, and then abstaining from meat on Friday. Um, so 
yeah, wanted to be able to do that. I find I find it very helpful. And maybe if I can say this too, I think there was a like a superpower that the the church was very easy to kind of like let go of. Like I I imagine, right? I'm kind of projecting that they they kind of thought the like abstaining from meat on Friday, like is it really that big of a deal? Yeah. It doesn't seem like it's that that big of a deal. Yeah. I think it was a huge deal. It was. That now as Catholics, we don't have this just kind of like universal across the country, across the world, that I know that wherever I go, I'm united with other faithful who are also doing this simple ab abstinence. I don't know. I think I think there was a lot more to it than just like, eh, I actually enjoy fish more than meat. Like people say that. It's like, <laughs> but it's not actually about your food preferences. It's like being united. Yeah. With the rest of the body yeah. in this yeah. similar. Yeah. What happens if you would say be too busy and you forgot and you didn't fast on Friday, you ate meat and you fast on Saturday to substitute to take over? If you forget to abstain, no, you are going to. Ray, if you if you forget, that's that's not a sin. The Lord understands. Uh, some of us have a lot. That'd be a great thing to do. Yeah. So, yeah, to make it up some other way. Yeah. No, you're not. You're not morally obliged in that way. Like under, if you if you know that I'm. I just got to have it. And you end up I'll refer you back to number two. And how, <laughs> how bad is the bad news? Uh, ask you a question. What used to get me, you know, okay, during Lent, and we would see people come into the fish fry, okay, and they would have a plate so full. Okay, they're not eating meat. But they have they're not the soup, the dessert. The, I mean, and they are consuming all this food. To me, it just to me it wasn't right. You know, why do you have to because you can't have meat, you're gonna just eat as much of that fish and all that extra stuff. I, I, yeah, I often wondered why the church had dinners on those days when we were supposed to fast. I, <laughs> Make I'm, other people yeah, I'm not, I'm not gonna disagree with you. Yeah. <laughs> The uh, all of these all of these practices can be abused. Yeah, that you can have. How can the church <laughs> provide fish on a day that all of Catholics are abstaining? Like a fish fry, that's a great idea. Yeah. But of course, yeah, that can be abused. Where now we have like all these delicious fried foods without the spirit of like, I want to be united to Christ crucified. <laughs> yeah. Most people don't walk into fish fries and get that, that get that and get that say. And that's not like any yeah. critique against like the yeah. many who work so hard work to be able so to hard. offer it. And right. a lot of it is for like the, it's for fi the financial benefit. Right. That's great. <laughs> but without a spiritual benefit, then yeah. <laughs> La last thing to be able to, to conclude. Um, the third, the page three from the, the new handout. I just wanted to teach you a, a new prayer. This is the this is the this is the pirate prayer. And the pirate prayer uh, is yeah a play on the R, the abbreviation. Um, this is a it's a prayer that uh, I've been taught that I do all the time. Just about every time I go to, to prayer, I do this. And I'm sure a lot of you do a lot of this too. This is basically just a, a simple method of being able to relate my heart to God's heart. And so the process would, would be this. I'll allow you to, to take it home and to, to read it. But the, the first step would be you. after you place yourself in the presence of God is this A, acknowledge. What, is, what am I acknowledging? Well, in a sense, it's an examine. It's just taking an inventory of what's going on in my mind, what's going on in my heart. And many of us run through our days just like one thing to the next to the next, kind of distracting ourselves. We're just kind of moving on to the next entertainment, to the next whatever. And then we get to the end of the day, we're tired, exhausted, we crash, and we fall asleep, and we miss it. 
like what happened and when we pause and stop there can be a lot that comes to the surface acknowledge it before the lord take an inventory it's simple but it's profound but the prayer is not just acknowledging the prayer is then relating it to god god i'm really angry right now i don't know why but you know how i get angry and you know how Earlier in this day, I had this tough conversation with someone that misunderstood me. They had some harsh words and I haven't been able to stop thinking about it. It's relating. It's just a, a simple way to invite the Lord into that. And if it helps, imagine the Lord asking you more about it. The acknowledge is God asking you, Adam, how you doing? I'm like, oh, stress, overwhelmed, anxious, joyful, happy, or like... And then the second question, the relate, is God asking, tell me about it. What happened? Tell me everything. So that's that's kind of behind it, right? So you relate to the Lord and then receive. It's such a crucial thing, right? This is more than just a, a time of like a spiritual dump on the Lord where we just tell him all <laughs> the stuff that happened. I related to the Lord, but then I give him space to respond. This takes silence. And for a lot of us, is hard that we need to really give God space to be able to speak to me. What might it look like to receive? Maybe it's a simple consolation of knowing that he heard me, to knowing that he understands what it's like to be incredibly overwhelmed, or what it looks like to be ignored, or what it looks like to be taken advantage of, or he knows the fullness of joy and being able to that's that that could be it maybe it's yeah maybe it's peace maybe it's joy maybe it's a word of like you should forgive him you should let it go that would be like an example of receiving something and then uh going through the a r r the last r is responding so it'd be an, an opportunity to however you're moved in faith to respond to the lord of wh what he gave you Maybe it's contrition, maybe it's remorse, maybe it's gratitude, maybe it's a resolution of like, yep, I'm going to change my life or I'm going to make sure to really try and keep you in my in my mind moving forward. Um, yeah, I'm asking you this week to spend 15 minutes each day just to kind of to go through that. It's a great, great habit to be able to get into that can really uh, open up an authentic prayer with God that, that isn't just... Yeah, but going through going through the motions or going through rope prayers, but really getting in touch with your heart and relating it to his heart. I don't know how many of you journal, but journaling is just such a powerful thing too, to kind of like be able to do not full like <laughs> novels or something, just little entries of like, yeah, how is my heart? What did I relate to the Lord? What did I receive from him? My goodness, if you were able to look back over a week and see like, God gave me a gift every single time of prayer. How consoling that would be. I lied. The last, last thing is um, <laughs> uh, prayer cards. We're approaching the month of November. This is a beautiful prayer of St. Gertrude. Many of you, many of you know it. She was given a, a revelation of a, a beautiful prayer to remember the souls in purgatory. Traditionally, there's this idea that when you pray this prayer, a thousand souls are released from purgatory. The church, for not bad reasons, moved away from like counting, doing this act, like gets you these many days or years off of purgatory. I think that can kind of like miss, miss the point a little bit of what's happening. But I like to still kind of hold on to and imagine if it is a thousand souls, why not? Why not? And it's like, that seems like a lot. <laughs> there's a lot of people out there you know and there's a lot of souls in purgatory that are waiting for us to pray this short prayer in faith and confidence of god's mercy i won't have millions of souls <laughs> waiting to receive me whenever i get my sorry soul uh through purgatory to say like we'll pray for you thank you there. yeah please yeah please <laughs> all glory be to the father and to the son to the holy spirit as it was in the beginning is now for Amen. May God bless you, keep you, protect you. In the name of the Father, and the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Amen. You guys are awesome. Good to be with you all. Have a good week.
Good night, everybody. Good to be with you. All right.